All right, good morning or afternoon, I guess, depending on where you're at, right? I hope everybody's doing great. I uh, didn't really film the last few days because honestly, it's kind of repetition and, you know, YouTube wants me to put out videos every couple days to be recommended. So it does kind of suck when I don't. But at the same time, I feel like if you're going to take the time to watch one of my videos, then it needs to at least be good right and something a little more informing that kind of stuff so let's do a real quick update on where we're at on things not drone on about it then uh we're gonna get to work right tater so we got that built up there with the 12 inch you see those two so i've got to cut down a corner so i'll cut six inches out of a corner from the top and the bottom which will leave me nubs on one side of each the middle part will be waste and i'll fill those corners in this one's got to go up one more level. We'll need a 45 that gets cut. That's the height that needs to be. Uh, I put a piece in across the bottom. I'll have to cut that foam later, but that's fine because that piece will come out. I've explained that before. So the concrete flows in. Uh, we're filling this in for the door now. Uh, so we'll cut the door using the pre-buck, put this in here and then we can go ahead and go across which is a goal to go ahead and get all the way across and done with stacking we determined that the concrete height needs to be six inches lower than the house so poured height of concrete right for the garage and this drive over tunnel so right now we're 18 inches we want to be six inches down finished which would be 12 and then concrete will be at least four inches thick so that brings us eight so i need to cut a piece down to uh i said that right right six and four ten yeah eight so you need to cut a piece down to some pieces down to 10 inches put those on here and then when we set our floor joists in here and the pan and pour concrete over it and seal it and everything that should be good that's the corners donnie put together that go over here they stack there We'll have to cut can't do nothing once a sailor always a sailor all right actually i got a job you can do over here in the shade
So yeah, the radius will be after that. <sighs> Man, I put them off as long as I can. That's okay. We're making a jig, so those will actually go pretty quick. Now, but we are going to pour the upper pool first. Um, and the basement after. So this is Friday. You're probably seeing this video on Sunday. So the next pour will be next Friday. That's the time I'm giving myself to build the sun shelf, which we're not going to pour the concrete for the top of the sun shelf. We're just going to pour the walls as we pour these walls. And then when it all cures, uh, we'll put uh, some filler in and then we'll pour the top of it. It kind of sucks to do it separately uh, because I really don't need the flat work guys when we pull the basement. Uh, but I mean, I can get, it's always good to have some help so I can bring one flat work guy out and we can do that or I mean, I can do it too. I mean, it's not like it's too crazy, but that'll let that cure up because if we just, when we fill the steps down there with gravel, it started to bold some and um, I could just get a bunch of uh, CMU block and stack it in there and pour it, but it'd still be pressure. I don't know, I gotta think about that, I guess. But roughly, that right now that's the plan. Um, I put, we had to get some more of these webs for the 12 inch block that's on the top. Those came in, so I just put those in. So we got finished putting the rebar in, cut those corners down and tie everything together. This right now is angled down a little bit, so I've got to take that piece of wood off and put feet on, especially since we're not doing the, uh, since the sun shelf's gonna be this way instead of going that way now. So I need to raise that up a little bit, cut that out for the metal corner, just like those, and put the corner in. Uh, I put rebar preset, that rebar that's on that wall for the negative edge wall goes all the way to the bottom, it's one piece. But I'm gonna add some extra pieces in every, so every slot that doesn't have a piece of vertical rebar, I'm gonna add a piece. I'm gonna put a lot in that corner right there. Uh, in that corner, I'll do a couple more sticks. Do, do, do. And then we've got to uh, put, you know, same thing like I saw in the last one. We gotta put the foam on the bottom. We've got our one single linear main drain. And I ordered four more linear main drains that we're gonna use as the feed instead of drain, pushing out to feed back the water from the lower pool that fills this up and makes it overflow. So I've got to decide if those are gonna go on the side of the sun shelf or if I'm putting them in the floor. In the floor would be nice uh, just because honestly it would be easier. But then uh, when that's running, Anybody standing over it, I mean, you got water pushing up. I don't know if that really matters there. So I'll reach out to the experts at all three pools and ask about that. And then the bracing is supposed to arrive today. That's one thing that's put us behind because I'm going to run bracing all the way down that exterior wall to really um, brace that up because the last thing we need is filling that with concrete and it just dumps over. That'd be great, wouldn't it? And I'm hoping I'm not cursing myself saying that out loud but hopefully uh that won't be an issue uh, yeah it's a long way down huh so we will come in here i'll put brace more plywood probably i'll probably just put more plywood i was going to do strips but you see i still got to straighten that wall out but i can't straighten it without the bracey being here so we put more plywood across and I'm going to brace it all the way down and run full 16 foot tall pieces of two by four in the bracing for all of the deep part of the pool. And then of course it'll adjust as we go up and then we'll brace it all the way back. Uh, I was going to brace it to the wall, but I'm probably going to go ahead and just go out and brace it on the dirt. We'll see. But that gets braced and pushing back. It'll have plywood on this side, then foam. Um, of course, the plywood's just there for extra bracing, and yeah, so we'll fill it up like uh, normal. At least it's only 54 inches tall, so it's not near as much uh, weight as what we dealt with in the lower pool. So we'll take our time and uh, 
keep a close eye on it, of course. So uh, I bought a lot of extra bracing. I got 150 zont. So when I'm done with all this, I'm gonna sell some of it off. There's a couple more guys that wanna build pools. So uh, I'll make them a good rate and sell those off. But that way, if I run four zonts down, instead of running them every 54 inches, I'd run them every two feet if I want to. That just braces the whole thing and gives it you know, more push. Why not use it if you've got it? No reason to take chances with that because that's that's probably my biggest stress factor because the rest of this is pretty straightforward. That, actually that, and that weird corner where we T-walled in, um, we're going to put a lot of bracing on that too. So I, I've been asked and I will do it once we finish, not finish the whole project because everybody would have yeah, you know, that's going to take a while, but once we finish this stage, I'm going to do just a sit down. Maybe I'll do it as a live a sit down kind of question and answer deal about uh, what I've learned. Because that's the whole point of this is to help others that want to do this stuff, too, because this is a superior way of building. You end up with a much better, safer built uh, house when you're done. And on the pool stuff, it does allow you to do some do it yourself. Uh, especially if you're doing the two-sided forms for it. I had to go a little extra, of course, because I wanted the negative edge and yada, yada. But, I mean, I could have done it. I could have done it either way. But, anyway, it's where we are at. So, yeah, I definitely have regrets is too strong a word, but there's pros and cons and stuff I've learned as I've gone along. I absolutely would still build with ICF. We've got some other projects we're going to be doing with it, but we will talk about those so that you can learn on it also. And... <laughs> that's it i guess right i mean i better get to work all right the day is coming to an end and uh yeah so i have reached a milestone the basement walls are stacked out except for of course the radius walls <laughs> and just a little bit that goes over those three doors the two big doors and the access to the pool bath everywhere else is stacked to height on the basement now i do have some work to do on the garage stem wall but felt pretty good i got this done by myself today just want to get it knocked out out of the way and tomorrow morning when i come out here i'm going to make a punch list and i for one am very happy about that so that's the final height of the tunnel there all right so i've made an executive decision over here this is the hallway to the theater this was supposed to get a door on the original plans and then i was going to do a cased opening here but i'm going to get rid of that little stupid jut out so that means i will have to fill that one hole that we've already cut for the t-wall and i will take and put probably a square of plywood here that will seal that off and I'll put it on the back side too since that's a little weaker to bulge out since it doesn't have the connections there and when I'm putting my bracing in fact I'll write this right now da, da, da. Why keep this in your pocket and you hopefully see these things so I'll put an extra brace right there as well we're gonna open that up um, I haven't decided here if I'm going to cut it all the way back to, you know, of course, if I'd done that to begin with, that could just been another corner too. It's just one of those things. Sometimes you see stuff after you've done it. Everybody does that. You build something and you're like, oh, I could have done it this way. So that stays that. This is a different size. So I probably will cut that all the way back, put foam all the way up and seal it then those gates corners that I've got for the pool. So after I put all that up, I can put the gates corner on them all the way up too. I'll think about that some more, but that's what I'm leaning towards right now. Just open this whole thing up instead of having it closed in. So that, like I said, that's the height of the tunnel. So it's just a little bit uh, shorter than the other walls. Yeah, so that's done. And uh, I'll need help, so it probably won't happen tomorrow either, but next week uh, we can put these pre-bucks in, but I have a 
it's not horrible, but I've got definitely have a substantial punch list for the pool because that's getting poured Friday if we don't get the thunderstorms that just all of a sudden out of the blue popped up on the weather map. So we'll adjust as that happens and figure it out. And that's all the 12 inch optimizers I've got left. Donnie and Taylor put those together today. I'm gonna burn through a bunch of those, get in the garage stem wall the right height so that where it'll be when we pour the concrete for the uh, for the garage for that. And is there anything else to tell you? I don't think so. I mean, that's, whew, it feels good, even though it's over 90 degrees out here today in May. I mean, May 3rd and just been burning up this last little bit. But, man, that feels good. We'll probably focus on the pool just when we get that out of the way and get the guys to dig those big holes that I put in the short that we need out there. And then the thing that I've got to get right that I've been stressing about, it's just math, but I've got to come in here, measure off all the walls, and I've got the uh, the transit, and I've got a DeWalt laser as well, and I've got to laser all this stuff up and set up eight different spots for steel columns for the foundation. For those, there's a little footing we got to pour. Well, I say little, some of them quite big with a lot of rebar in those. Get those set up, and then I'll have to mark those for the steel company because I'm responsible for marking where they go, and uh, they just come set them up. So that and... I've got to cut pockets in a few places where the steel beam, the part of the steel beam, will, one end will rest on the column, the other end will rest on inside the wall. Fences up, my neighbor. Woo -woo -woo! He's uh, putting up another fence for us. Let me show you that real quick. There you go. So all this is ready to go in. They've got to adjust a few more posts and cement them in. But this is the uh, other gate. This is the drive-in from that one. So now we'll have that fence look over here as well. If any of you ever come out here and Airbnb with us, once we have that all set up, this will be your view. So you'll come down through here. You got the fence over here. It'll be stained at a later date after it dries out. And then, you know, just kind of opens up from these trees. We're thinking about planting some stuff here and there. But anyway, just the general idea. And, uh, yeah, so you're looking at the lake. And uh, that's a view. Go out on the dam. I need to spray the dam. And this, the rip wrap really helped, but I do need to spray it. I don't want to spray with anything too toxic though, so I got a couple ideas on what to use though. There you go. So I don't know how well you can see it from here. Maybe I'll zoom in, but you know, so there's the waterfalls, you see it from here. Blah blah blah. So should be pretty cool. Got my mobile office. That's where I work out of. We read, or James, James and Michael redid the inside of that into more of a work, work trailer environment. So uh, that works. I can be out of here, get out of the little house, be right here at this house. I take breaks, going there, look at plans, stuff like that. This over here. So all the grass came up great, very green, very beautiful, but. A lot of it was rye, which is not a heat tolerant grass. And there's fescue in there too. So the fescue's coming up good and it's still growing, but we haven't got any rain. So even though it's gonna slow me down some, I am glad we're getting rain the next few days because we need it. But, you know, there's a line there because we only did so many feet of the bank and then so it kind of changes colors on us. And we had to uh, get a good mowing on it, but we mowed it. It looks shorter, but it's six inches right now because it was like 12. So it's at six inches, which is where we want it. In fact, six or seven. Uh, but like I said, we need some rain. It's been abnormally hot and dry. So that's not a good combination. I could set up sprinklers. I could pump from the pond and maybe I should have, but I mean, even with it being dry, man, we have been mowing every five days. So, yeah. I guess that's all I got. I know, uh, I don't think Dog Dog was in this one. I don't know, it depends on what else I got filmed. 
um, Miss Beely Good and Beely Devil were at a trip to Myrtle Beach. So Dog Dog kind of hung out with sister-in-law Liz. Some people had asked about uh, sister-in-law Liz, how her surgery went. Appreciate all the all the prayers and the good wishes. It was very, 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 very rough for quite a few weeks. Um, you know, we'll probably talk more about it, but I'm not going to talk too much about her medical condition without her sitting here with me. She wouldn't mind, but um, we'll get into it some more because I think she would want to bring some awareness to it. So we'll talk about that in a future episode, but she is a thousand times better now. Um, you know, but she's is some rough stuff, um, but still better. She's in a lot of pain and that's pretty much been taken care of. So we're thankful for that. And uh, everybody asking about her, thank you. And uh, oh, the ducks are sitting on eggs. So I guess we'll have more ducks. And yeah, but I'll update some more of that later. Um, just want to get a video out for Sunday. Da, 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 da. Uh, I guess that's all I got. So, see you in the next one.